You are already familiar with the observer pattern, at least conceptually. The observer pattern is all about one publisher, also known as subject, and subscribers, also known as observers. The concept is pretty much the same as with YouTube subscriptions. I make a video and upload it or publish it to YouTube. If you're subscribed to my channel, you get a notification when the new video is available. In this chain, I am the publisher or the subject, and you are the subscriber or the observer. When you're no longer interested in my videos, you can unsubscribe and no longer receive any notifications from the publisher. But please don't do that and just keep being subscribed. And if you haven't yet, now is a good time to do that. Hopefully this concept is very familiar and easy to comprehend for you. Coding it is pretty straightforward as well. First, we need to define the interfaces for publisher and subscribers. A publisher should be able to register and unregister new observers and send them the updates. An observer obviously needs to be able to be notified. First, I will create an observer.py file. All we need is to create an observer class and define an update function that will be called by the publisher. What we are defining here is really an interface though, it won't have any implementation details. While we are here, we can also define the subscriber class, which will implement the observer interface. We are going to keep it simple and just print a message that it's time to watch a video on each execution of the update method. We'll also require a name in the constructor argument, so we could see which observers were called once we run the program. Now to the publisher. Let's create a publisher.py file and define a publisher interface. We will have the register and unregister methods, both of which will accept an observer as the argument and not return anything. And a notify observer function that doesn't accept any arguments and does not return anything as well. Let's implement this interface and call our concrete implementation video publisher. First, we want to be able to keep track of the observers, so we could be able to notify them and unregister if needed. Register and unregister functions are really simple. We either add an observer to the list or remove the observer from the list. The notify observers function isn't really complicated either. We just iterate over the list of the observers that are subscribed to this publisher and call the update method on each of them. Now we can create a main.py file and write some logic to verify that it's working. Let's create two subscribers, Paul and Samantha. Let's also create an instance of the video publisher and then register Paul and Samantha with it. Now let's call the notify observers method on the video publisher. Actually, let's do that twice, pretending that there were two videos published really quickly. Then let's unregister Paul and call notify observers again. And lastly, let's unregister Samantha and call notify observers last time. I'm also going to print some separators so we could see a little bit easier what happened at each step. As we can see after running the program, it correctly printed the message for both, Paul and Samantha in the first two steps. After we unregistered Paul, it only notified Samantha, which is also correct. And after we unregistered Samantha, there was no one left to notify, so nothing got printed. In our examples, we didn't pass any data between publishers and subscribers, but in the real life application, you may want to be able to do that. One solution could be to modify the observer's update method signature and require passing in some data that the observer may care about. There are a couple of problems with such an approach though. First, when we update the interface, we will also have to update all the classes that implement that interface. And secondly, just imagine that our observers will require more or less data in the future. That means that every time this change happens, we will have to update all the observers again, regardless of whether they need the data or don't need the data. So that doesn't really sound like a good approach. It's a terrible experience. An alternative is to let the publisher store the data and let the observers retrieve the data that they need after they get notified that there is some new data to be retrieved. And lastly, when we registered the observers, we used a list to store them. Could you see any issues with that approach? What if you register the same observer twice? What if we have 1 million observers and one wants to unsubscribe? Tell me in the comments what is one change that you may think of that could solve both of these potential issues. What we explored today was all synchronous code and our publisher knew about our subscribers. It has its use cases, but it also has limitations. Watch the next video to learn about the publish subscribe pattern to make your code even better.